In this tutorial we will be looking at how to set up a simple DC schematic in microwave office and how to uh, simulate it. The first thing that we need to do is right click on circuit schematics and then select new schematic and give it a name. We can use spaces in this name although sometimes I use underscores just out of habit. We'll call this schematic DC power transfer. Then we can either press enter or click on create. Now we need to put elements in our schematic and we can do this in uh, one of two ways. We can either go to the elements tab right here and then we can select the type of element that we're looking for. For example if we're looking for DC source we may go into sources and then click on DC and you can see that a list of available elements appears which are DC sources of various types and next to each element there is a description. We can also get a better description by right clicking on the element and selecting element help and then the relevant element page comes up and gives us more information about the specific item that we selected. To place any of these elements on the schematic we just click on the element of interest and drag it onto the schematic then release the mouse button and click to place. To remove the element we simply click on it and press delete. However, as we have seen in our introductory tutorial, there is also a simpler way to find our elements and that is by pressing Ctrl L. And then we can either search by the name of the element, for example if we know that a DC voltage source is called DCVS, we can then pull it up this way. Or if we are not sure about the name of the element, we can simply control click on the description heading and then we can simply type the description of the element we want down in the search bar for example DC voltage source and you can see that now the element has appeared and has been found by its description. So let's double click on the DC voltage source element because we'll need one in our schematic and then place it on the schematic like so. The other thing that we need to add now for a voltage source is of course a ground reference. We can do this again in one of two ways. We can either select the ground icon up here or we can simply press Ctrl G and then a ground reference will appear which we can directly place at one end of the voltage source. Now what we're going to add is a couple of resistors, one representing our source resistance and one representing our load resistance. So we can again press Ctrl L and then we can search for our resistor from the description. Notice how the filter at the moment is on the description heading and so we are searching by description in this case. So I can just type resistor in the search box and you can see that a resistor has been found. I can just double click on that and then place it on the schematic like so. To get another resistor I could again press Ctrl L and now I know that the name of the resistor is RES so I can just press the Ctrl key and click on the name heading and just type in RES and I've got the resistor there as well. I'll just close this window and instead of doing this I'll just click on the current resistor that I've got on the schematic press Ctrl C and Ctrl V and this will give me a copy. I can rotate the element by right clicking and then I can just press the left mouse button to place it. Again I will need another ground reference so I can press Ctrl G and get myself one. The other thing that we may want to do is to change the ID of these resistors to make them more recognizable and we'll see why this is particularly important when we are tuning the value of these elements. So to do this we can either double click on the ID and just type in the name and we call this RS uh, or we can also right click on the element, select properties and then again we can change the value of ID or indeed the value of any of the parameters of the element from this window. To wire everything together all we need to do is hover over with the mouse on a specific terminal that we want to wire our cursor becomes the wiring tool, we just left click and then take it to the other terminal we want to connect it to and left click again and this has created the connection and again for the other resistor. Now we want to change the values of these elements we can do this uh, simply by right clicking 
and going into properties or more simply we can just double click on uh, whichever value we want to change and this should enable us to change it. We'll change the value of the voltage source to 2 volts to make the calculations straightforward. We'll also change the value of the source and load resistances to 50 ohms. As we will see later, 50 ohm is a very common value for resistances in RF and microwave engineering. The other thing that we can do uh, to uh, be able to see the circuit as uh, large as it can fit in the window is click on the view all icon right up here. So if I just click on this and you can see that the circuit gets maximized according to the available space on the schematic canvas. When we are interested in DC values for current voltage and power or for uh, average values for AC voltages and currents then it is very useful to um, add annotations to the circuits. Annotations allow us to see the voltage and currents for various elements as well as power and uh, we can add them quite easily. We can either go to the top menu and select draw and then add annotation but there is an easier way. We can simply go to the project tab, right click on the schematic where we are interested in adding annotations and then select add annotation from here. The annotations that we are interested in are the DC input current for all elements, DCIA. You can see that this is already selected and you can also see that there is a description for the element right underneath the selection box. So we click on apply and then we also want the uh, DC voltage for each two terminal element and we click on apply and then OK. Now we can either click on the analyze icon or we can press F8 for the circuit to be simulated. And you can see that now we've got the current across each element. Of course this is a one loop circuit so the current throughout is 20 milliamps i.e. 2 volts divided by 100 ohms. And you can also see uh, the voltage for each element. You can see for example that the uh, DC voltage source of course is uh, 2 volts and then we've got 1 volt dropped across the source resistance and 1 volt dropped across the load resistance as one would expect. Now the other thing that we can add, the other annotation, is the power. So we can uh, again uh, right click on the circuit schematic and then go on to add annotation and select DC PWRA which is the DC power for all elements and click on apply and then OK. We'll then need to re-simulate to see the uh, value of power for each element and you can see that now we've got voltage, current and power for each element. And you can also see that the power dissipated in the source resistor and the power dissipated in the load resistor are the same and equal to 20 milliwatts. We can move the text for each element slightly and you just click on it and drag it wherever you like so that uh, things do not overlap. And then again we can click on the view all icon to get things uh, back to being visible. Now the other thing that we can do is tune the value of our source and load resistances and see what effect this has on voltage, current and power. To do this we can uh, either click on the screwdriver tool up here which is called the tune tool and then we can click on whatever value we want to tune, for example the resistance value or the source resistance. You can see that this changes to blue in color which tells us that the parameter is now tunable. Or we can also right click on the element, say on the load resistance, and then select properties and on the value of the resistor we can simply tick the tune box. The advantage of doing it this way is that you can also specify the limits between which you want to tune. For example, you could say that you want a lower limit of uh, 1 and an upper limit of 100 in a step of 2. So you've basically made the value of the load resistor tunable and you've also specified the range over which you want to tune it and in what steps. Click on OK. In the case of the source resistance, because you only use the tune tool, then the range will be automatically determined by microwave office. So let's just uh, simulate it again. 
and then we can now click on the slider icon which allows us to tune the parameters that we've made tunable either by using the tune tool or the properties window. Now you can also see why it is important to select the right ID for the elements. In this case you can see that RL and RS are clearly defined by their IDs. If these were only left to what they were before, i.e. R1 and R2, this could create confusion and the bigger your circuit gets, the more important it is to have the right IDs to identify the elements. So if I increase the source resistance for instance, you can see that the uh, current through the circuit overall is actually decreasing and that's just uh, pretty straightforward. However, because the current is the same for both resistances but the source resistance is higher, then you have a higher voltage drop across the source resistance and hence you have more power dissipated in it than in the load resistance. To get back to the initial values, we just click on revert and then initial. And you can see how things change in real time almost instantaneously. Now if I increase the load resistance, you can see that the uh, current of course again decreases the overall current, but in this case we've got a bigger value for RL and hence a bigger voltage drop across RL which determines uh, the fact that more power is dissipated uh, in it. However, you can also see that uh, whatever you do to RS or RL, if they change from the uh, initial values where they were identical, then you end up in a situation where the power delivered to the load is lower than what it was before. Now let's revert to the initial values yet again. Now what we normally have is a system where RS is fixed and all we can do is change RL. You can see that when RL is different in value from RS, then the power delivered to it diminishes whether we are increasing RL or decreasing RL, there is a, an optimum value for it which occurs when its value is the same as the source resistance. If we go away from that value, then the power delivered to the load diminishes. And this is a very important and well-known theorem for maximum power transfer, which states that RS has to be the same as RL in order for maximum power transfer to be achieved. Let us now go a step further in the demonstration of the maximum power transfer theorem and also introduce a very useful element that uh, we can uh, employ in uh, our simulations called a swept variable. As we mentioned earlier, the value of RS is usually fixed, so what we want to do is to be able to sweep the value of RL across a range of values and then verify that the maximum power transfer occurs indeed when RL is equal to RS. The first step to achieve this is to get ourselves a normal simple variable and place it on the schematic. We can declare a variable by simply clicking on uh, the equation button up here and then on the schematic and writing the name of a variable together with its initial value. So we'll call this one R sweep and we'll make it equal to 50 ohms as an initial value. Although we will be sweeping the value of our sweep, we still have to have an initial value assigned to the variable as we have just done here. Now the next thing that we need to do is get ourselves a swept variable block. And we can do this in the usual manner by just pressing Ctrl L. And then we may either search by name or description. Let us search by description. So the first thing that we need to do is Ctrl click on the description heading. And then in the search box we'll type swept variable. And you can see that an item has come up called SWP VAR. So we just double click on this and then place it on the schematic like so. The first parameters that we have to specify is the variable name. Of course we've declared a variable called R sweep and initialized it to a value of 50. So the variable name that we need to put here is indeed R sweep. Next, we need to assign a range of values to this variable. To do this, we can simply double click on values here. We could list a number of values here separated by commas. For example, we could say 0, 1, 2, etc. But of course, this is quite cumbersome if you have a lot of values. So what you can do instead is use a different syntax, which allows you to define a starting point, an end point, and a step for your range. And this is done by basically typing stepped, and then you type the initial value 
and the final value separated by a comma, and then also the step. So we are creating a uh, range for the value of our load resistance, which is between 1 and 100 ohms in increments of 1 ohm. Lastly, we need to make a connection between the uh, circuit element that we want to use and the uh, swept variable block. So we need to uh, replace the value of our L, which at the moment is 50 ohms, with our sweep. So to summarize, when using swept variables, we first have to declare a variable and initialize its value, as we did with our sweep. And then we need to connect this variable to a swept variable control block and determine a range of values that we want our variable to assume. Lastly, we need to create a connection between the circuit element whose value we want to sweep and the swept variable. So now we're pretty much ready to go. The only thing that we need to add is a power meter, which will then allow us to display the power measurement on a graph. So what we can do is make a little bit of space for ourselves by just clicking and dragging the mouse cursor to select the load resistance and then move it along a little bit. Remove this connection here because this is where we will be putting our power meter in series. And then again we press Ctrl L and remember we are searching by description at the moment. We'll just type in power meter and we should get ourselves a power meter that can do the job. So let's double click and then place this in series with our load resistance. We need to put a ground reference at terminal 3 and we can do this by pressing Ctrl G as we've seen before. Now we can click on view all and we're pretty much ready to go. To display the results of our simulation we need to set up a new graph. So we'll just go back to the project tab, right click on graphs, select new graph, select the type as rectangular and we'll call this graph power versus RL. Now that we've got a new graph, we need to add a measurement to it. And to do this, we just right click on the graph, go on to add a new measurement. For measurement type, we'll select nonlinear and then power. And then as a measurement, we'll select PT, which is the total power. And the measurement component will be the power meter that we've just placed on the schematic. The simulator also asks us, what do you want to do with your swept variable? Now, because what I want to see is the power versus the value of RL, and the value of RL is represented by the swept variable, of course I want to use the swept variable for the x-axis, so we will keep things as they are. Click on Apply, and then OK. Now, let's simulate. Now, on this graph, we've got the value of RL on the x-axis, and we've got the value of the power dissipated into RL on the y-axis. So it is obvious to see that there is a maximum point on this curve where maximum power transfer occurs and we've kind of verified this with the tuner but now we've got it on a graph so it's a little bit more rigorous. What we can do is press Ctrl M to add a marker on our curve so we'll just press Ctrl M and then click on any point on the curve and you can see that we have a marker readout which gives us the value of the x-axis at the top and the value of the y-axis at the bottom. And then what we can also do is right-click on this readout and select Marker to Max. And now you can see that uh, the maximum of this curve is reached when the load resistance is 50 ohms and this corresponds to a power dissipated in the load of 20 milliwatts, which is the maximum we can achieve, since RL is equal to RS at this point.